Okay, here we've got a question um, about the graph y equals e to the 3x plus 1 in brackets to the half. We've got a diagram with a suggestively shaded region r, uh, but I think we'll be coming to that later. We've got to start by finding the gradient of the curve at the point where x equals log 2. Now the gradient of the curve, of course, is dy by dx, so we have to differentiate this. It's only got one x in it, so although there's a combination of two functions, it must be the chain rule where we've got an inside function and an outside function. Use the method from your chapter 5 notes to differentiate correctly using the chain rule. Substituting the x equals log 2 and simplify your answer. Now, um, they don't specify exact methods, but when you're substituting a log expression into something involving ease, you want to practice being really careful to show why you get uh, to the exact answer you do. So try and be convincing in that. Five marks for that. Re-entry point now in part B. To find the area, or estimate the area of R, we've been going to use the mid-ordinate rule with four strips. So on a diagram, draw your four strips. If you've got, I mean, you know what the shape of the curve is. If you draw your, your strips and you decide for each strip what the x-coordinate is that you're going to use, it's a mid-ordinate, so it's going to be the x-coordinate in the middle, that will tell you in your table of values, help you decide what x-values to use, show the y-values clearly, whether you simplify, whether you get them as decimals or not, I always would, to be honest, show a clear set of y-values, and then I would work directly from your diagram for each strip, work out the area of a rectangle using h, which is the width of a strip, together with your y-coordinates of your table. And you should always have four easy marks for mid-ordinate rule or trapezium rule. And then finally, yet another re-entry point in part C. We've got the region R now being rotated through 360 degrees. That just means all the way round. You never have to use that number. You just have to quote the correct formula for a volume of revolution. It's got uh, an integration in it. Decide whether uh, it's dy or dx. We're rotating around the x-axis, so that should settle that it's d that. And then um, don't forget the thing that comes in front of the integral sign. Put the appropriate limits on. And then the thing you've got to square here, look, y is expressed as a bracket, oops, up here, as a bracket to the power of half. And of course, fractional powers cause square roots. Well, a power of a half calls a square root. So y is effectively the square root of something. And if we're squaring y, it'll just get rid of the square root. So the fact this looks like a nasty function, after it's been squared, which is what you need to do in this formula, it looks like a much more straightforward function that you can integrate in a very um, straightforward way as a standard function. Don't forget to put the limits in. Don't forget your pi in front of your integral and get your nice easy four marks for that.